debate is uh, a way to call out to artists to essentially react to the current political and social climate. Um, and that uh, is influenced by our upcoming presidential debate. Well, I think we were inspired originally uh, by the free speech model um, that our community media department has. In the gallery model, it's a little more problematic because there's a lot of logistical issues. The mediums, you know, they run the gamut between video and painting, uh, photography, drawing, and with each of those, there's issues. Go down enough. Yeah. So that there's breathing room. What are we looking at as far as height here? But I think. Uh, having that possibility of being able to um, speak your mind in, in all of these different languages um, is really quite amazing. We're in the Brick Gallery and we're about 20 minutes into the opening of the open call up for debate exhibition. We are crowded. We have a lot of people looking at the art. We have 132 artists in the exhibition. We have people voting on the art, reacting to the art. a huge issue that people are very worried about. Incarceration is something that artists definitely are attempting um, to visualize. Men's issues and women's issues and kind of looking at masculine and feminine identity uh, as it relates to social issues. Uh, we've got, you know, Republican and Democrat, the two-sided system that we have and whether that is successful or not. This piece is called Thresholds of Violence. It's uh, 2015. It's based on an article I read in The New Yorker about school shooters in America. And all the, uh, the objects on the floor represent different shooters throughout history. The backpack represents kind of a generic high school white boy. Uh, my piece, the piece that's on display is a part of a process that I've been working for on the last 20 years about um, individuals as part of the, the total population. So this particular piece is about individuals who are tied into technology. Uh, the concept of my work is about the perception of people's time. You can see that it has uh, three sculptures and each one is run in a different speed. And actually it's run in the same time. Hoping that these 30 days are uh, about conversation. I, I want it to be about bringing people together um, to have common discourse, um, to have arguments, I guess, if, if we uh, really get down to it. Yeah, well, it just reminds me of like having all of that stuff. The local voice is just very diverse. Um, we don't really know how many artists are in Brooklyn, but we do believe that more artists than anywhere in the world are here. And they are involved in these issues, and they want to take part in this whole social dialogue. What is the best way to get your message out? I think that is what is on display here. So I want to thank all the artists. I cannot thank them all by name because it's 132. Uh, but I know you're all here, and I want to thank you all for submitting really, really good work. We're really, really proud of this show. It's still in our gallery right now. You got time to come and check out Open Call. Well, now we're happy to introduce, or reintroduce you really, to our colleague, the woman you just saw in the video, Brick's Contemporary Arts Assistant Curator, Jenny Giroux. Welcome back to VK Live, Jenny. Thanks. And we also want to welcome two of the artists from the Brick Registry who are represented in this exhibit. Carlos Regal, thanks for being here on BK Live. Thanks. We're also for happy us. to have Ilana Emilia Garcia, both of whom hail from Brooklyn. Congratulations. Welcome to Brick. Thank you. Thank you for being here. So, uh, Jenny, we'll start with you real quick. What went into curating this exhibit? 
Well, Open Call is a is a way for us to work with our Brick Registry. Um, there are over 1,700 artists on our Brick Registry, uh, and this will be our second year of doing the Open Call. Uh, it's uh, it starts with an application process. Uh, we had 230 artists apply, um, and then we were able to put fit, really, 130 artists on our walls. And we really think of it that way, as like uh, figuring out how many we can possibly include in this exhibition. All right, Carlos, you made the cut. Now, is this work that you created to be in, or did you have something in your studio that you thought, hmm, this is a little up for debate? Uh, for myself, I had something in the studio. Mm -hmm that I thought would work for, for this kind of dialogue. And um, it's a piece that's a school desk, and it's custom for Micah, and it's got kind of a mark making on it. And the mark making kind of uh, helps you to think about, like, when you were a child and you were in school, and you were kind of drifting and trying to scratch your Formica desk. And something to do with the school system that I really thought was, was permanent right now. Mm. Liana, what about your piece? What can you tell us? Well, actually, when I, I love actually the subject of the exhibition, and I was trying to do something new, and then I realized that I had something in the studio that it was exactly what I was looking for. Uh, I usually use uh, the Dominican shade as my symbol and my object in most of my pieces, mm -hmm. and this one was on fire. And I was thinking that there is so much right now that we are in the political scene that is actually hot. It's a hot topic, and we're fighting for so many basic things. And that was an image that kind of represented exactly how I feel about the, our society right now. What has been the response since it opened? I mean, huge. You saw the opening. We had over 800 people here um, just for that event. Um, uh, but continuous people coming through. We have a, um, a feedback board um, mm -hmm. where we're asking audience members to respond to works in the show or um, their own ideas of the political climate now, and there's, there isn't any room left. <laughs> there's so many responses. So in that instance, like, you guys see the responses that people, like, have and leave to the show as a unit. I wonder, Liana, looking at it, how do you think your—to uh, play curator for a second—how do you think your work fits into the overall impression that the whole show is making? Do you see synergy between some of your thoughts and your expression and what else is in the gallery? Uh, for sure. I mean, you know, when you have uh, opportunities like this, you see your work in the studio and isolated. When you see it with a group of people that are actually doing exactly and treating the same subjects like you, you realize that everybody actually have almost the same um, thoughts or the process. And it's almost like uh, you feel like you belong to a community when you realize that everybody is actually thinking, trying to find a solution or trying to kind of use art mm -hmm. to be part of something. And then you realize that you belong somewhere. And this is actually what this vision is, and what Brick does, actually, mm -hmm. make everybody together. Carlos, why do you think the Brick Gallery is a good place uh, for your work? Or is it just, you know, you want to show it anywhere? <laughs> for, for, for myself, uh, the entire Brick community makes a lot of sense for me, both the, the media aspect, the gallery, the performing arts, the, the kind of uh, the way that all these things work together and, and kind of cross-pollinate and make new new possibilities happen. So, like, this television show right now, this exhibition, I have—there's been other times where I've met people that have made work in the performing arts sector as well. And I feel that all that—that that, that entire inclusive model that you guys have here at Brick is really fantastic, honestly. Well, really Carlos is, in particular, he's a, a media arts fellow right now, so I think he really he's gets all this idea. <laughs> yeah, I really love this whole <laughs> He gets this idea, yeah. Yeah. I have an idea about what, how to work here, and I like working here. Well, that concludes our brick infomercial. Let's get back <laughs> into, the, into the show. So, what do you think the impression? Have you read any of the little slips on the wall, or is that like the work is done, you've given birth to it, you don't want to read what the people are saying? What do you think those 800 folks walked away with uh, after the open? Well, I think it's always good There's to. Water. It's free. <laughs> I think it's always good to read because you know something, you have one idea and you think that, you know, you have it down and then. You start reading what people think. It opens your, opens the um, a way of communication, mm -hmm. and kind of you start having relationships with other people. And then it's always good to know what people think, because actually the piece you did it one way, 
and it happens that then you see another way. Yeah, so it becomes a new eyes. thing. Yeah. So it's, I always love it because you never know who is going to say what. Yeah. And I would say, hmm, I like that. <laughs> so it's always important. And you, you, you know, I do the piece for myself, but actually yeah. it's for everybody else. So it's good. How does this play into, I don't know, current events, like, uh, you know, up for debate? Uh, is that a tie into the election that we have coming up? Yeah, I mean, it's it's not, um, it was definitely something that we considered as far as the entire reason for doing this show is showing uh, our free speech model that we have here at BRIC and thinking about it in terms of our contemporary art department and what a perfect way to show off our registry and this idea of of freedom of speech by not curating it in any sort of way, allowing the artists to really speak uh, and not the curators. Well, the public is going to get a chance to speak as well. There was a vote that was happening during the opening. Is that continuing? It is, yeah. Two more weeks. Um, the audience members are choosing the viewer's choice, mm -hmm. and that comes with $300 um, and a uh, feature. Cash money? Cash money. Right. Uh, and a feature on our website. And then there is the uh, Best in Show, which is uh, picked by Elizabeth Ferrer and I, the co-curators, and that will end up with an exhibition at BRIC uh, later this year or next year. Well, three hundred dollars is on the line. Either you want to make a pitch for your fees, get some votes, a little electioneering no there. Yeah, Carlos. Make us feel the burn. No. Feel the burn. <laughs> All right, he got some votes right there. So it's just till the end of the month. Another two weeks. I mean, uh, closing words. Like, what what is your pitch to people that you meet in everyday life to tell them to come on down to Brick to see this? exhibit specifically? I mean, I think this is an opportunity, unlike many other experiences that you have in a gallery, where you are seeing multi-generational, multi-racial uh, people from all walks of life, their work on the walls. Uh, and I think that is very overwhelming the minute that you step in, you feel that. Uh, there is also a closing party. Oh, uh, <laughs> it's uh, part of what we call Beat Night, which is a gallery walk. So not only are we inclusive within the space, but we're going to be working with Mokata, Urban Glass, uh, and a couple other galleries in the area. It's downtown Beat Night. Downtown Brooklyn Arts. It's, it's a fantastic <laughs> exhibit. It's, it's here at Brick House, obviously. Carlos, Liana. Jenny, thank you very much for being here. And open call up for debate just till the end of the month. That's right. Get it's down. awesome. Thanks thank you, guys. Coming.